When a man reaches retirement age after 40 plus years of professional work, he must reinvent himself. My approach was to build a retirement home with my wife Meredith on Cape Cod and to rekindle my passion for wildlife photography. In 2017, I headed to the richest wildlife mecca in South America, the Brazilian Pantanal. During the wet season, 78% of the Pantanal is submerged. It is the dry season when the roads are passable and the water greatly recedes and concentrates birds, reptiles, and other wildlife near the relatively small areas of permanent water. The still incomplete Trans-Pantanal Highway was built on elevated dirt berms with numerous wooden bridges. Building the berms created deep roadside ditches where the remaining water in the dry season congregates innumerable fish which in turn attract fishing in birds, reptiles, and mammals. It was the first week of August 2017 when I arrived on the banks of the Dirt Pantanel Highway. It is just before dawn when I began to capture images of this huge reservoir of biodiversity. The great flocks of birds flying in the distance are mostly hundreds of great white egrets. That's a ringed kingfisher calling. We can also see great egrets at the water's edge, as well as the much larger black-headed, red-necked jabiru storks and the smaller wood storks that have the down-curving beaks. There are a great many caimans feeding in the water. They splash in the ditch water as they lunge for the fish that are trapped there. The other birds flying about include small snowy egrets, black skimmers, yellow-billed terns, and ringed kingfishers. Here comes a snowy egret walking. Compare its small size to a Jarburu stork. Caimans belong to the same family as alligators. The caimans in the Pantanal are the Yakari or Southern Spectacle Caiman, and they can grow up to nine feet. Both male and female caiman bellow loudly, but much of the sound frequencies are below the lowest thresholds of human hearing. Bellowing is used to attract mates and also for claiming territory. The noise can be heard by other caimans at a great distance. To bellow, the caiman first inhales air into the lungs and then creates the low frequency roaring sound while exhaling. This causes the water to vibrate on the caiman's back. And the sprays of droplets also confuses my camera's autofocus.
Let's take a look at some of the Pantanal's land birds. The peach-fronted parakeet is common in the Pantanal. They travel in pairs rather than flocks while they feed on fruits and seeds. The monk parakeets are very social and omnipresent. The monk parakeets build multi-chambered communal nests of sticks. Sometimes yarabu storks will build an even larger nest on top of the monk parakeet nest. Both species happily coexist until the combined weight of the nest causes all of them to crash to the ground. Turquoise-fronted Amazon parrots are numerous in the Pantanal and usually are seen in pairs instead of flocks. Orange-winged Amazon parrots favor river edges and do not associate with turquoise-fronted parrots. They are seen in pairs during the breeding season, but afterwards they can form large flocks to raid food crops. The chestnut-eared Aracari are fairly common in the canopies and borders of Pantanal woodlands. This one is in a flowering pink trumpet or epi tree. The Tico toucan is much the largest of the toucans and due to his large colorful bill can be seen at a great distance when flying or perched. They like to perch in the open as if to draw attention to themselves. Trogons, including the blue crowned trogon here, are colorful birds sought after by birders and photographers. Curacaos, chakalakas, and guans are large birds that resemble less colorful pheasants. They range in woodland or arboreal and forage for fallen fruit. Due to their size, they are often extensively hunted as bush poultry. The red-legged Sariamas are large, long-legged, long-tailed birds of the open fields of the Pantanal Cerrado. They have raptor-like heads, but are not related to the raptor family. Sariamas remind me of the similar looking and behaving secretary birds of Africa. Sariamas are usually seen signally or in pairs as they stride about foraging for large insects, rodents, and lizards. These are the signature birds of the Pantanal, and I was very happy to film them while they made alarm calls at me as I hid in the bushes. The rhea is South America's largest bird, standing about five and a half feet tall and weighing up to 85 pounds. It is flightless and lacks a tail. It walks slowly across fields eating plants, insects, and small vertebrates. Rheas are wary and will try to keep their distance from humans. This rhea is just finishing a dust bath. And these two are engaged in a dominant struggle. See how each of them tries to attack the other's eyes. There are two species of screamer, the horned and the southern. This is the goose-sized southern screamer. It inhabits the edges of streams, lakes, and ponds and is mostly herbivorous. They are very noisy birds that don't like to be approached. While in search of Picari, one of the Pantanal's wild pig species, we found a pair of crimson crested woodpeckers. These are big woodpeckers, being more than a foot in length. They are usually found in forests, but less often in clearings. They often forage in pairs or small family groups. 
The less commonly seen pale crested woodpecker is smaller than the crimson. The little woodpecker is only six inches in length. I photographed this male during the golden hour. The great horned owl is found in suitable habitats across all of North and South America. It is certainly the largest owl in the Pantanal. The Ferrigneus pygmy owl measures only six and a half inches. It preys on small birds. Its flight is swift and direct. Potus are solitary, nocturnal birds with extremely large eyes which they keep closed when hiding during the day. Potus are very hard to spot as they resemble the end of a broken tree branch stub. Potus sally forth only at dusk in search of larger insects. Vultures are as large as eagles, but they feed almost exclusively on carrion. Their featherless heads and necks are adapted to this purpose. The large hooked bills are useful for ripping flesh and the bills of the biggest vultures can open even thick hides. Their feet are relatively weak and are not useful for carrying prey. The black vulture is widespread across North and South America. It locates carrion and refuse primarily by sight and often congregate around towns and refuse dumps. King vultures are much larger than the black vultures which they easily dominate. King vultures are not common and usually spotted singly or in pairs, soaring at great heights or feeding on a carcass. The lesser yellow-headed vulture is about the same size as the more numerous black vulture. They never seem to fly high, but prefer to glide above the grass similar to harriers. There are an astounding 46 species of raptors that could be spotted in the Pantanal. Even so, I felt lucky to get good images of five species. The most interesting and beautiful was the black collared hawk, which in the Pantanal actively snatches fish from the surface of river streams and ponds. This hawk's fishing behavior is similar to that of our ospreys. Moreover, it was quite surprising to witness the Pantanal's large coquille herons, who resemble our great blue herons, imitating the black collared hawk's behavior with on-wing fish hunting. Great black hawks are smaller than black collared hawks, but the great black hawks are still powerful predators preying on birds, mammals, and amphibians, and even fish. They are locally common in woodland borders and especially near water. Crested caracaras are members of the falcon family, but they do not hunt on the wing like other falcons. Instead, crested caracaras are opportunistic feeders preferring carrion. They are often seen feeding among vultures. Crested caracaras are commonly seen in open agricultural areas where they perch conspicuously and stride about confidently on the ground. The roadside hawk is a member of the Buteo family with broad roundish wings. It is both widespread and common in open habitats as well as being relatively easy to approach. Snail kites were very abundant when I was in the Pantanal and I saw many hundreds foraging or perched near water in fields and at the edges of woodlands. When food is plentiful, snail kites will forage in loose groups and even roost communally. In appearance, the snail kite's long hooked beaks are distinctive. The plumage of adults are slate gray and immatures are mottled brown. Both have red eyes. The scarlet macaw was found across much of the northern third of South America. Scarlet macaws grow to 33 to 36 inches and are notable for their red and yellow plumage. They too are social fast flyers and have been known to live up to 80 years in captivity. The green-winged, also called the red and green macaw, is larger than the scarlet and they grow to 35 to 38 inches and have horn-colored bills. The green wings, like the scarlet macaws, are often seen in the company of other parrots eating clay from riverbanks. It's believed the clay acts as a buffer against toxins in their natural diets.
The blue and yellow macaw can reach a length of 32 to 34 inches. As you can see, they are vivid in appearance. Their beaks are black and their naked faces are white, but turn pink in excited birds. The blue and yellow macaws generally mate for life and they almost nest exclusively in dead palms. Blue and yellow macaws live from 30 to 35 years in the wild and can reach sexual maturity between the ages of 3 and 6 years. Largest of all the flying parrot species is the hyacinth macaw. They have isolated ranges in Brazil and Paraguay as shown by the tan areas on the map. But they are most prevalent in the Brazilian Pantanal. Some hyacinth macaws are bright blue while others are more violet. Hyacinth macaws are very social birds and they can form lifelong pair bonds. Depending upon the habitat, hyacinth macaws nest on cliffs or in large tree cavities. The majority of the hyacinth macaws diet comes from native palm nuts. The bird's very strong beaks are necessary for breaking and eating these nuts, kernels, and seeds. In fact, they can even crack coconuts. The hyacinth macaw also boasts a dry, smooth tongue with an internal bone that makes it an effective tool for drilling into fruits.